Hello and welcome to the next video in the MeanStack.js how-to series. In this video, we're going to be talking about folder structure. If you haven't seen it already, uh, I'd recommend going back to the file naming structure. That's a good one to see uh, because in the folder structure here, you're going to be seeing some of the file types and wondering why do we name them like that. So that could, that could be very beneficial. But uh, let's just continue going forward here. And let's talk now into the folder structure. So when we took into account the file naming, we knew we kind of had to put some uh, type of constraints on it in the sense of, you know, we needed you guys to do something particular with naming so that we could orchestrate it and know what everything was. But with the folder structure, we thought, well, we, we got to make something simple so they're going to want to use it. Something straightforward that there is no question about where something lives you can point and go, it lives there. So what we did was we came up with two main folders that have the core logic, which is client and server. And everything in the client gets sent back, obviously, then to the client. That's exactly why we did it. We didn't want to put something in the client that didn't go public facing. So everything in here is public facing. Everything inside the server folder is private. It will never get sent to the user unless you tell it to. Now, back up to the client. The client inside of there has the Bower components, which is all for end dependencies. Uh, it has the dist for anything that we need to distribute out in the sense of if you're going to production, something will get compiled, put in there. Now, it, we also have a folder for images. All global images go here. Modules, this is where each individual module will run, and we're going to get more into that in another video. But here's where all the core logic lives based on each module. Also, we have scripts. If there's something that needs to be compiled here with uh, some type of scripts, whether we're minifying something or adding things together. Also, styles. This is where we add in our global SAS, um, which allows us to use it throughout the entire, all, or throughout all the modules. We also have an uploads folder so in case anything gets uploaded and you need it to be front end facing you can load it here that's not to say that you load something here it's going to be secure what you upload here needs to be public so let's go back down to the server then and now same thing here if we need to compile something and distribute it out we have it here in the sense of you're using something with babel or you're doing something else where we need to uh, join some things together in the back end It'll go here. We also have a layout, which is how we lay out our initial page uh, initially for the index.js. Whenever we send it back, this is where it comes from on the server side code. And then we also have modules in here too. We only have blogs, systems, and users, which handle the core logic outside of setting up the routes and things like that. We also have a Swagger folder in here. Swagger is for the API documentation for you to use. And then we have some other files in here that handle exactly what they say they do. Errors, environments, sending mail on your behalf, middleware, passport, and register, which is registering all of our modules for the front end and the back end. So you'll also see another video on that if you need more in depth. And then lastly, we have uh, set up some other file folders that really help you become more productive in whatever scenario you are. Whether you're an enterprise, whether you're out of an enterprise, whether you're a designer, developer, whether you're just playing around with it, the rest of it is there to help you. So we have a commands folder that is purely for you to use and manipulate to whatever way you need it. So the way it works is uh, you have a templates in here from the client side and server side code, and you can manipulate it in the CLI. You can manipulate the questions, and this will allow you to customize your own scaffolding tool. Really cool, we think. And then also we have a documentation folder where all the wiki pages that are currently updated every release will be dropped into here. We also have a configs, which inside the configuration folder, there is all certificates relating to uh, HTTPS, uh, environments relating to development, night watch, production tests. You can also add in any other environment you want here and it will work as long as you use the proper naming uh, whenever you turn on the system. And we also then keep some other settings in here that are very global. 
Going down, we have a reports folder that just shows you reports based on Play-Doh or Nightwatch when you run them. We also have a scripts where if you've seen the other videos on how to generate SSL, here's where it lives. And any other scripts you can think of, we're going to put in there. And lastly, tests, which is obviously where then we leave front end, back end, and end end test cases. And then lastly, uh, we have a Bower, some Bower files, some Docker, some readmes, and we have all of our servers down here that you can run. So we're not going to go more in depth in each individual one of these. That will be for another video later. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments below. Reach out to us.